Welcome those stories shortly, but of course the big discussion this half hour, technology and terrorism at the BRICS summit. Well, leaders of the summit, Shaman, emphasize trade, economic development, and most importantly, terrorism. And a big boost to India's effort for making terror as the most important problem the world should address, the BRICS countries took a big stand against terror groups. Lashkari Taiba and Jesh e Mohammed, both Pakistani based terror organizations, were mentioned in the final BRICS declaration. China has been blocking India's effort to designate Masood Azhar as a global terrorist in the United Nations. Azhar is the chief of Jesh e Mohammed, JEM, and with the BRICS declaration on the terror organizations, it'll be interesting now to see Beijing's long term stand on the issue. BRICS leaders expressed their concern on the security situation in the region. Terror groups like the Taliban, Al-Qaeda and its affiliates, the Islamic State, the Haqqani Network, the Tariq e Taliban, the Pakistan and many other outfits were mentioned in that declaration because they do bring violence in the region. Terrorism was an element that our Prime Minister spoke about, but he was not the only one. In fact, all the BRICS leaders came up very strongly in condemning terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. And you can see that being reflected in not just one, but several paragraphs of the, of the declaration that has been adopted, where the leaders have strongly condemned terrorism. And then they have also been able to identify and acknowledge the pernicious, the deleterious effects that certain uh, terrorist organizations, such as the Haqqani Network, Jesh e Mohammed, Lashkar e Taiba and others have had, uh, uh, and TTP others that have had in 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 terror, uh, in in spreading terror across. The BRICS summit comes just a week after China and India agreed to end more than a two-month standoff between hundreds of troops in Doklam. Prime Minister Narendra Modi called for closer cooperation among the BRICS countries, including Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. They are the member countries to spur growth, promote transparency, and support the sustainable developmental goals. Modi urged the group of emerging economies to be the driving force behind stability, development, and prosperity. Terrorism was an element that our Prime Minister spoke about, but he was not the only Hi, more. Story and digital resources are powerful tools in fighting poverty and corruption. A strong British partnership on innovation and digital economy can help spur growth, promote transparency, and support the sustainable development goals. The BRICS summit gives China a chance to position itself as a bulk for globalization in the face of U.S. President Donald Trump's America First agenda. President Xi Jinping said China will give $80 million in funding for BRICS cooperation plans. The member countries embraced openness and inclusiveness dedicated to foreign and opening a world economy. Apart from gathering furthering cooperation with the emerging markets and developing countries, BRICS leaders declared to work together for practical cooperation. President Xi Jinping called on the BRICS countries to stand up against protectionism and advance the reform of global economic governance. Yatuidun 促进世界经济增长,提供新动力。all right, to get perspective on this story about technology and terror at the BRICS summit, let's introduce tonight's guests and our correspondents. We have Pranesh Prakash, a policy director joining us from Bengaluru. We also have Vishnu Prakash, the former High Commissioner to Canada, joining us from New Delhi, and our Weon correspondents, Ramesh Ramachandran, live on the ground in Shaman, China, and Raghavendra Rao, joining us live from the Weon newsroom here in New Delhi. 
Good evening to all of you. Ramesh, let me start with you, where all the action is unfolding this hour at the Shaman, where the BRICS leaders addressed terror for the very first time, listing organizations, certainly a big blow to Pakistan. Ramesh. Indeed, Archie, the big takeaway uh, today was the uh, Shaman Declaration, which had a very strong formulation on the issue of terrorism in particular. And for the first time, we've seen uh, the Shaman Declaration, the BRICS Declaration for that matter, take uh, specific names of terrorist groups, especially those who are active in Pakistan and whose activities are directed against India. And to, to discuss this issue with me, I'm now joined by Atul Aneja, who writes for the Hindu based in Beijing. Uh, what's, what's the sense you're getting after reading the Shaman Declaration? It's the language which use the formulation of the issue of terrorism and the naming of uh, specific groups that are directed against India. Yeah, I think that is something which is the most notable, that you're directly naming groups which are based in Pakistan. And China on board with that. I think that is something which is, which is very, very different from what has been, as far as I know, from what's happened in the past. And uh, I do think that uh, apart from... Uh, uh, stepping up the fight against global terrorism, it has major implications for the improvement of uh, India-China ties, which were, came under extreme strain during the Doklam crisis. So we're entering a post-Doklam phase on a fairly optimistic note. Uh, but having said that, uh, there will be difficulties in the India-China relationship. But what really is the message, which is that if we can have a framework within which we can manage our differences right. and take it forward, I think that will be a big takeaway from, from the BRICS uh, summit. And, and talking specifically about the, 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 the paragraphs about terrorism in particular, do you get a sense that uh, China is signaling its intent to maybe relent on its opposition to the proscription uh, of Masood Azhar in the UN? Is it a signal of its intent to change its position on, on that issue? Perhaps it is, but time will tell uh, because uh, it has to walk the talk. Because now the statement has come, but we'll have to see how uh, the Chinese uh, actually behave in the 1267 Committee of, on, on, on Terrorism. And if they go ahead with it, that will be a big confidence building. I think it is already a confidence building measure, right. what's happened today. But that would amplify and advance her towards mutual trust, at least in some areas, especially areas like terrorism, which both India and, and China are victims of. Absolutely. And since you refer to Do Club incident, now we've seen uh, tomorrow Prime Minister Modi will be meeting his Chinese counterpart, uh, President Xi Jinping, here in Shaman. That will be one of his last engagements before he departs uh, China for Myanmar. Now, their meeting will come uh, about a week after the standoff ended on Do Club. Uh, what's the sense you're getting? What are expectations uh, from tomorrow's meeting in particular? I think extremely tantalizing because the, the stage has been set for a meeting which can go a big way forward. I wouldn't like to use cliché words like historic, etc. But it's an exciting moment. And will the will the two principles build on what has been there already in the in the Sherman Declaration? And that's something we have to watch out for. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, Prime Minister Modi or President Xi will let this opportunity go. I would also be watching on the duration of this meeting. Right. The longer it prolongs, like the meeting with, with the President Putin today went longer than expected, which itself is exciting as to what was the cause for prolongation of that. And if there is a link between that meeting and what's going to happen with, 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 between uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi, then we might even expect a longish meeting uh, taking place tomorrow. So it's all very exciting, but you know, we, we can't have a, a, a definite uh, sort of a fix on what's uh, exactly going to happen. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for speaking to me and appreciate it. So there you heard it. Uh, tantalizing is how Atul Aneja describes tomorrow's meeting between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping here on the margins of the BRICS summit in Shaman. All right, Ramesh, of course, we'll come back to you and check in with you as we continue this uh, broadcast focusing on technology and terror. And, of course, in about 20 minutes from now, we'll be listening live to the U.N. Security Council in the United States. Again, sanctions with regards to that emergency security meet when it comes to North Korea. All barriers breached. Dirty hydrogen bomb made. Insecurity and chaos. Condemnation pours in. Tonight, powerful Security Council meets. Will Trump get their support? We on reports live at 7.30 p.m.
And as we continue this discussion, let me also bring in Vishnu Prakash into the conversation with regards to this. Vishnu, let me ask you, when it comes to China, specifically dealing with the case of Masur Azad and the fact that, you know, they have uh, tried to block this uh, countless number of times, now there is added pressure after these specific organizations were listed on that declaration. What position will this put China in going forward? Vishnu? I think that uh, this is an important development. Uh, we, take, we should take due note of the fact that at the BRICS summit, uh, China did not oppose or could not, did not or could not block a reference to the terror organizations, including Jaish-e Mohammed, Lashkar-e Taiba, etc., which are operating from the Pakistani soil and directing its guns at India. Having said that, uh, there is a long-standing position of China, uh, and China has been defending Pakistan, has been uh, putting a technical hold on uh, uh, the declaration of uh, Masood Azhar uh, as a terrorist, uh, as a t global terrorist. I will not read too much into the statement. I think, uh, as one of the panelists said, it's important to see China walk the talk. I think we still have a distance to traverse. But it is a step forward, it's a step in the right direction, and uh, that's about it as far as I can see it. Well, the BRICS declaration also touched upon the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, to adopt and use technology in its combat moving forward, especially when it comes to terrorism. They also touched upon other topics about innovation, entrepreneurship, science and technology, as well as research with students and elevating infrastructure, including cloud computing, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, and the 5G network. So certainly a host of issues that are being addressed. Let's bring our guests back into the conversation. Pranesh Prakash joining us now from Bengaluru. Pranesh, technology is certainly crucial in playing a role in combating terror. How essential and important is that that these leaders met and address that head on? Uh, the answer to that question is, uh, in my mind, still to be determined, because uh, while this definitely uh, puts forth uh, a statement that technology is an important com uh, component in combating uh, terrorism, money laundering, and other such criminal activities, uh, it doesn't quite lay out a, a roadmap for how this is to be done. It uh, it lays down an intent. It lays down. Uh, the need to use technology, but doesn't say how. And it also, uh, you know, emphasizes the, the role of human rights uh, online, and it also emphasizes uh, the participation of all stakeholders uh, in Internet governance. So it, uh, some of your viewers might be concerned about uh, crackdowns, um, on internet uh, usage and internet freedoms due to such statements. And, and I'd like to point out that actually the document talks about many things, uh, including terrorism, but it's not uh, one-sided in its focus on uh, or against terrorism. All right, Pranesh, we'll of course come back to you and continue that conversation. Thank you for those insights and perspective. Well, when it comes to terror, terror funding, and how these leaders will be able to tackle that, let's get perspective on that. When Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the BRICS summit in Shaman, China, there was really no uh, direct reference to terrorism and its Pakistani sponsors, only an indirect hint. Let's listen in. In an environment where the sixth stability and development and prosperity, BRICS leadership will be crucial in driving this transformation. If we, as BRICS, can set the agenda in these areas, the world will call this its golden decade. It was left to his senior officials to underscore India's concern about terrorism and non-state actors. Issues of interest, of course, as I said, apart from the economic uh, aspects of the cooperation, uh, I think there are certain uh, developments in the world which are important for us. And I'm sure leaders, when they meet like this, are bound to look at it, including the scourge of terrorism, which has been a very important subject for us. Well, as it happened, the BRICS declaration reflected all of India's concerns on that note, quote, 
We call upon the international community to establish a genuinely broad counterterrorism coalition and support the United Nations' central coordinating role in this regard. We express concern on the security situation in the region and the violence caused by the Taliban, ISIS, Al-Qaeda and its affiliates, including the Eastern Turkestan Islamic Movement, the Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, the Haqqani Network, the Lashkari Taiba, the Jaishi Mohammed, TTP and the Hizbutar Tahrir, end quote. The declaration on terrorism had two positive implications. One, it made it the need for Prime Minister Modi to address the issue which could have raised hackles in China. Two, it also underscored that India and China, despite the Doklam standoff, had the maturity to keep that dialogue going. The declaration would have satisfied all of the members since it named those groups directly and threatened each and every one of them. The point is, whether it changes anything on the ground is left to be unsaid. The pundits say China, at least in the near future, is unlikely to relax its opposition to attempt to ban Masood Azhar of the Jaishi Mohammed, nor is it likely to crack down hard on Pakistan providing sanctuary to the terror groups. But this declaration may give Beijing the leverage to put pressure on Pakistan to exercise more control over them. The declaration also mentioned that the India proposed comprehensive convention on international terrorism. So certainly a lot addressed there. Let's bring Raghavendra Rao into the conversation. Uh, Raghavendra is certainly interesting there when it comes to dealing with these organizations that were listed head on specifically against Pakistan. Absolutely, Archit. And uh, the run-up to the BRICS summit uh, itself showed that China was very reluctant with the very idea of uh, the Indian side raising uh, terror relating to Pakistan during the BRICS summit. In fact, there was a statement coming in from the Chinese spokesperson saying that India may have some concerns against Pakistan's counter-terror moves, but uh, BRICS was not an appropriate forum to discuss those. So they had indicated uh, much in advance that they were not expecting India to raise terror or Pakistan on Chinese soil. And when Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke uh, today morning uh, and did not mention terror at all uh, during his uh, intervention, uh, it appeared as if, uh, you know, the Indian side had, had indeed agreed uh, to what the Chinese were expecting out of them. But the, the statement which has now come from Shaman, uh, that really is, is the key takeaway as far as the BRICS summit is concerned. Naming terror groups like the Lashkar e Taiba, the Jaish e Mohammed, and several others, including Al Qaeda and ISIS, uh, it's, it's, it's a very significant development, more so for India because Lashkar e Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed are the two primary terror organizations who have launched attack after attack on, on the Indian soil. And uh, these two groups, I mean, uh, the entire world is, is seized of the matter, except Pakistan, apparently. And the, the fact that these terror groups have been specifically named in this declaration, right. indeed, a significant day. Thank you so much for your perspective. And all of our guests joining us, Vishnu Prakash, Pranesh Prakash, Raghavinder Rao, and Ramesh Ramachandran. More BRICS updates continue tonight at 8 and 9. With that does it for this edition of We On World is One News. I'm Archit Sashadri. Good night.